Boardwalk is open daily. 90 degrees here at the ballpark. You see the winds are calm. Humidity, as always, low. And uh, it is a few puffy clouds and very dry. Well, minus Posey and Nunez, here's the Giants starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It'll be Denard Spann in a leadoff spot, followed by Panic, Brandon Belt, and Hunter Pence. He gets to hit cleanup in tonight's game. Brandon Crawford is in the fifth slot. And last night, the Giants hit their first three run home run, and it came off the bat of Brandon Crawford, followed by Hunley Hill and Austin Slater, and pitching and batting ninth. Is Jeff Samarja. And something's going on that's got Bruce Brochi in uh, in a frown right now. And I don't know what it is, but he's not happy. That's Gary Cedarstrom, who is, I don't know where he's going. Oh, he's going to get in the headsets. So I've never seen this before. Well, and he's. Puts those headsets on. He's going to confer with the other umpires back in New York. But that's that's a guy that's got something on his mind, and that's a guy that's trying to figure out what's on Bruce Bochy's mind. Uh, maybe, maybe it's something about Strickland. What do you think? Well, it could be that they finally have received word. About Hunter Strickland in regards to his suspension. Originally, the league office said he was to spend six days on the suspended list. The Giants appealed it. They held it. They held the the hearing last Tuesday, and they have not gotten back to the Giants as to what the outcome of the hearing is. And they've kind of been in limbo here. It totally affects Bruce Bochy as to how he uses. His setup man Hunter Strickland. They used him two days. They said they would get back to him in two days. They did not get back to him. He used him again last night. They have not gotten back to him, and this may be what it's about. If that's the case, the Giants are going to have to go with 24 men, and they are going to have to amend the lineup. And right now we're still waiting on Cedarstrom. This has happened before Cedarstrom went down to get the headsets on. And with the lineup in his hand, Cedarstrom's lineup, that's what would lead you to believe that it has something to do with the uh, the card, the card that has all the names on, who's available. And the lineup card will have everybody on the team listed on that card. If you're not on that lineup card that's handed to the umpire, you can't play in the game that night. Well, if you have a guy who's suspended, he has to come off the list. So again, that is our speculation. Well, Zenzatella is ready to go. Denard Spans walking up to home plate. They might as well just put this on hold because you do need a home plate umpire. Although here's your chance for the automatic umpire strike zone. You know what? Let's. You know what? We'll call balls and strikes. <laughs> or have have the catcher call balls and strike. How do you think that'll work? Uh, probably not that good. I, I, I'm not thinking it would work. And uh, the problem is, is the fans don't have any idea what's going on. And uh, and uh, well, we don't either. But we're we're speculating as to what might be happening. Well, the very fact that they would even consider inconveniencing 40,000 people or however many people are going to wind up being in this ballpark tonight is it's crazy. Wouldn't it be great if he took the headsets off and just called somebody out? All right, so now the Giants manager waits. So he's calling Bud Black, the skipper of the Rockies, over. And Black's going to have to amend his lineup card. Again, we are speculating as to what it could be. We've never seen this before. Bud Black's still limping, by the way. I think. Now I think umpires should be miked. Yeah, I mean, why not? They mic him in the NFL. I mean, right now we're all in the dark here, as is everybody here at the stadium. Zenzatella is the one that 
is out there with an adrenaline rush that's just now starting to calm down a little bit. I have never seen this. And right now, I mean, the concern that Bud Black has is that I got my pitcher out there. He's heated up, ready to go. You're killing the drill here. We could be completely off with what we think it is. But again, this, this is unprecedented. We've never seen anything like this. Now you can see the lineup card in the Giants dugout. There on the lower left hand, Hunter Strickland is listed as one of the right handed members of the bullpen. I mean, I'm. I mean, yeah, we're just speculating that is about Strickland. It's about the only thing that makes any sense around here. So here's Span. The first pitch of the ball game is hit on the ground to Desmond, and uh, that's how this game gets started. The pitcher tonight for the Rockies is going to be the 22-year-old right-hander Antonio Sensatella, and he has had a great start, eight and two with a 3.84 ERA. And for Sensatella, they have really supported him well, getting him almost seven runs a game when he goes out there. He's got credentials. He's got a fastball that'll go mid to high 90s, a hard slider, and a changeup, all from a high three quarter release. And he's a strike thrower. And a call strike to Joe Panic. Panic's got a little ownage on him. Has a home run. And he takes the next pitch wide. Here's the 1 1 delivery to Panic. And Panic hits a high fly ball to right. Gonzalez back. It is out of here. Ownage is ownage. Home run number four for Joe Panic. So here's Belt. Well, let's take a look at the location. Middle in, right at the belt. Just spins it, stays inside it, and boom. Belt hits a little bloop down the left field line, and this is going to be foul. And he broke his back. So Belt breaks his back. He gets new lumber. We've just gotten an email that has told us that there has been some replay system malfunctioning. And that has been the cause of the delay. So all the speculation about Hunter Strickland uh, was off. 0 oh 2. Belt last night went 0 oh for 4 through a couple of walks. And that pitch is high. One and two. Belt does have a little bit of own. He's like six at bats. He's got three hits against Zenzatella. A couple of doubles. Two and two. They're trying to pound that high fastball above the belt. Got him. Now it's some knee high pain the outside corner at 95 for his first strikeout. And you're going to see a lot of low strikes from Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief and the plate umpire. Let's take a look at the defense playing behind uh, Sensatella starting the Rockies outfield from left to right. It'll be Tapia, Blackman, and Gonzalez. Good arms across the board. In the infield, they're going to have Arenado. 
and Amarista. That's the left side of the infield. LeMayhew and Desmond on the right side. And Tony Walters will be in the squad putting down the signs. Hunter Pence. One for four last night as he takes a strike on the outside corner. Not easy to see right now. There are shadows across the infield, so the ball is strobing as it leaves the pitcher's hands and goes into the shadows. Pence on the ground. It'll be Desmond. And that'll end the inning. So the home run for Panic is he knocks it out of the park. It's his fourth home run of the year. And it's bye bye baby. Samarja coming out. Giants lead this one 1 0. Look at their lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It'll be Blackman. See what he's done this season against the Giants. Hey, he's hot, followed by LeMahieu, Arenado, and Gonzalez. Desmond, Ian Desmond, will hit fifth, and it's Tapia, Amarista, and Tony Walters. And it'll be Zenzatella hitting ninth. On the hill tonight for the Giants will be the big right hander, Jeff Samarja, 6'5, 250 pounder. He's 32 years of age. And for Samarja, he's an eight year veteran. This is what he has done at 13 starts 2 and 8 with a 4 3 1 ERA. Look at the strikeouts against walks 100 punch outs to 12 walks averaging over eight strikeouts to every walk that he has. Giants have not supported him well. They've only got him 3.2 runs per game. That's one of the lowest uh, run support averages in all of the National League. This is what he did it throws. He'll throw a fastball uh, that will go anywhere from 92 to 98 miles per hour. He's got a slider a curveball. And he's got a split that he will use, and he'll also cut the ball. So Charlie Blackman steps up. His night last night. He went two for three as he takes a call strike. And then Lemayhew. And then Arenado. Swing and a miss, nothing in two. That's good. That's the split, and that's he uses that split as a changeup. That, that's a good one right there. I mean, he's got five weapons. Lifetime against these Rockies, he is three and four with a 3.24 ERA here at Coors Field, two and one with a 3.63 ERA. So he likes the friendly confines of Coors Field. Down low, one and two. Back it up with another changeup. He hasn't done that a whole lot of that yet, but as he's gaining confidence with that changeup, you'll start to see that more and more. It's become a good pitch for him. Got him. Let's take a look at the Giants defensively tonight behind Jeff Samarja starting in their outfield from left to right. It'll be Slater, Span, and Pence. Crawford and Hill on the left side of the infield. Panic and Bell on the right side. Nick Hundley, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. A night off for Buster Posey and Eduardo Nunez, who had some minor injuries in last night's ball game. Here's LeMayhew. Blackman, LeMayhew, and Arenado last night had nine hits and 13 at bats. 
and they scored eight runs combined. I know it's old news. Not fake news, however, old news. <laughs> we don't do fake news. Well, most of the time. In tight to LeMahieu, seven for 21 in his career against Jeff Samarja. Remember that time I used to tell you I, I, I threw 97 miles an hour? That could have been fake news. Could have been, but it also could have been a radar gun that was. That was just not correct, but you didn't know. Out of play, it's one and two. Arenado to follow. And the pitch is wide. Two balls and two strikes. The carry in this ballpark is from foul line to foul line, and uh, the warmth. Temperatures right around 90 today. And balls jumping. This is a live ballpark and a very fast infield. And a base hit. Nice two strike base hit from LeMahieu. He gets a lot of those. So here's Arenado. Arenado last night had three doubles. He was three for five. Crawford and Panic will play double play depth, but in this infield you can play a little deeper. And a first pitch strike, and it's 0 and 1. 10 for 23, Arenado against Samarja with three doubles and a triple. Pretty good owners right there. This one's going to bounce up and over. So the Giants catch a break. Make it four doubles. And make it look easy is what Nolan Arenado has, has done in his career against the Giants. I mean, that's right where they want it to be. That is the target. That is great velocity inside corner. And Ben Arms it right through the gap in left center. And here's the break. Hits the track, hops over the wall, and everybody has to stop. So a double and no RBI for Arenado as LeMahieu has to stay stranded at third for the time being. So here's the man that's in a horrible slump. He's 0 for his last 24. He did walk as a pinch hitter. In the ninth inning last night. No overshift, but panic playing in shallow right field. And a foul back in its own one. Easy decision for Bruce Bochy with the defense playing it back and not in. What he wants to do is stay out of the big crooked number inning. Has become the trademark of this ballpark and this team since they opened the doors at Cruz Field. They can put a crooked number on you in a hurry. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. And for Samarja, I mean, he's pitching for the strikeout. Averaging over a strikeout an inning, and you've got a hundred against twelve walks. I mean, they kind of put you in the strikeout mode, especially in a strikeout situation. Crawford's going to grab this two down. Number 
So here's Desmond. Oh, you're a slugger and you're in a slump, but you get a runner at third, less two outs, and you can't get him in. Oh, in this place? That is one that's going to stay with you for a while. Desmond, two for five last night. And he hits Samarja pretty well. He's eight for 18. Drives this one down the right field line. That'll be foul. Come off the bench, hacking. And it's no balls in one strike. Yeah, I think that's the mindset of a good hitter, though. You, you got a pitcher out there who's going to try and get on top of you quickly. 0 and 1. RBI situation. Be ready. And Desmond was. In tight, one ball and one strike. And Samarge is aware of the success that Desmond has had against him. He's got an open base here. He's got a young hitter on deck that doesn't know much about him. So you can expect him to pitch carefully. I mean, he's not really a nibbler, though. I mean, he he will attack. And that's fouled out of play. He's power in that inside corner with 94. Good pitch. Talked about the strikeout walk ratio that he has. I think it pretty much tells you that he doesn't like to walk anybody. So Marja with 101 strikeouts against 12 walks. There you see the lifetime numbers that he Desmond has against him. But still, he's staying on the corners, and that's where he needs to be. Got him, and that'll end the inning. Gonzalez, Desmond, leave him stranded. One nothing Giants. The game is brought to you by your Bay Area Mercedes Benz dealers. Last night, second inning, bases loaded, Giants down three to one, two outs, and Denar Span hits a ball, and this is highway robbery. A tremendous play from Trevor Story. Shortstop for the Rockies knocked all the wind out of him. And we assume that's all there is, although Story not in the lineup tonight. Still a great play, and that was our Mercedes pivotal play. So panic to home run. Giants lead one nothing. Crawford hitting 254, and he takes the ball low. It is fifth home run last night. An opposite field home run. His one hit in six at bats against Zenzatella is a triple. 
2 and 0. Oh. Softball and Crawford away. Now Crawford will look for a fastball that he can drive. And he'll also look for one side of the plate. Get real specific for what you're gearing in on. And a call strike. Three for five last night for Brandon Crawford. Here he gets jams and rolls this one to Desmond. One out, and here's Hundley. Senzatella, 22 years of age, as we said. 6'1, 230 pounder out of Valencia, Venezuela. So Hundley, who hit his second home run into the Rockies bullpen last night, steps up and Zenzatella throws. And there's a pitch down low, one ball and no strikes, with Aaron Hill to follow. No Buster Posey, no Eduardo Nunez. Two and oh. Buster walking around a lot better. I mean, that doesn't mean you're ready to take on nine innings in a crouch but walking around much better. As far as I'm concerned when he went down the steps last night walking around much better today is a big win. No, that's a big win. We figure it's going to be at least a couple days and Buster thinks he may be able to be in the lineup tomorrow. And I thought it was maybe the end of the year. Yeah. Hundley taking all the way takes a strike. 96 mile an hour fastball there from Cincinnati is our fast pitch brought to you by Xfinity the fastest Wi Fi at home and on the go. So I'm going to foul at home plate three and two. Posey who's not in the lineup tonight is available to pinch hit. So that's another good sign. So full count. Zinzatella had gone three and zero. Oh, now it's three two, and he got him. Our Jeep drive of the game last night. Giants catchers both hit home runs. Posey off of Scott Olberg in the seventh, and then Hundley off of Mike Dunn in the eighth. There's the home run by Buster, and here's the one by Hundley. Look out, bullpen. Here's Hill. Find out something about Zenzatelli. He did it with Crawford. He did it with Hundley. <laughs> he probably doesn't want to fall behind, but if he does, it doesn't seem to bother him. No, he's a strike thrower. I mean, he's got great numbers coming out of the minor league. One thing about the Rockies minor league system, every ballpark that they have in their minor league system favors the hitter. So when you see a pitcher come out of your system like Senzatella, who's 41 and 19 in his minor league career, but with an ERA of 2.45, you can pretty much figure that he's going to have a pretty good chance to succeed at the big league level, and he's doing that. Hill takes a strike. And the point you make about not being afraid of a 1-0 count or a 2-0 count, I mean, he's got good command of three pitches, and he didn't worry about throwing strikes. And now it's one and two. And you're going to see a fastball 76% of the time. He will two and four seam, but more fours than twos. Slider is a big specialty pitch, but he'll still throw the slot or the changeup three two. Tap foul. The last second. It rolled just foul. Walters couldn't get to it. So it remains one ball and two strikes. One hit for the Giants, the home run by Joe Panic. Popped up, and it's going to be a souvenir. So 
this will be pitch number 29. On deck is Austin Slater. Hill takes high. It's two and two. The pitch that Hunley swung at. Hill not biting. Nope. Three and two. Just a little outside. We mentioned Cedarstrom strike zone. He likes the knee high location and he has a little width on both sides of the plate. If you let him know you're a strike thrower, and Sensatella has done that early on in this game. Hit into right center field. On the move is Blackman. Still on the move, and Blackman in the gap will make the running catch. Tapia is going to lead things off when we come back. Bay Area Mercedes Benz dealers. One nothing Giants. We're in the bottom half of the second inning. Time now for our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. And last night, in the bottom of the ninth, it was Ramel Tapia with the base hit, the walk off single, and it came off Hunter Strickland. And this is how that wild game ended a walk off victory for the Rockies. That's our Togo's big play. Gary Cedarsham doing more work. Yeah, either replace the turf or returf the place. So Tapia will step up, 286. First pitch down low with Amarista and then Tony Walters. Parra's on the DL. The guy that's not in the lineup that is tearing it up is is Mark Reynolds. But Tappy has got the game winning hit. He had four hits on Sunday. Cues this one into center field a hit. And he's got the magic one do. So thus he's in the lineup. Well, that was definitely a magic one do hit. It wasn't anything close to the sweet spot on that bat. But hey, when you're hot, those are the kind you get. That's how you get hot. Right back up the middle, little Bettina Bungy backhand, as Bob Brindley used to say. It's 
So Amarista steps up, hitting 321, a couple of home runs, 15 runs batted in. Pinch hit last night, went 0 for 1. And a strike on the inside corner. I used to make me laugh every time he said that. Though. What's that? The Bettina Bungie backhand. Oh, yeah. well, a lot of things he said made us laugh. Well, I didn't even know who Bettina Bungie was, and I found out she was a female tennis player. And she had a pretty good backhand. Here's the 0 1. Runner goes, swinging a bouncing ball back to Samarja. He will flip to first, so they get the out. Happy and now in scoring position. And that'll bring up Tony Walters. You know how hard it is for me not to call Rymel Tapia, Rymel Tilapia? It, it's hard. It is hard. I did it last night, by no, the way. No, you didn't. I did. By the way, not one of your favorite dining cuisines. No, I don't do tilapia. Unless it comes out of McCovey Cove. Well, we've seen some things out of McCovey Cove lately. Here's Walters. The shark we saw the other day made it on social media, made it quite an interesting happening around the world. Yeah, a leopard shark. A little concerned about the leopard sharks. Walters at 296. He takes a strike, a late call by Gary Cedarson. He had to wait a little bit on Gary. Right on the outside corner, Gary looked at it and just uh, sort of casually lifted his right hand up to let call. us know. Good call. It was right there. Another split. This has been a good pitch for him tonight. And that's roll foul. You can now stream the Giants on the go on NBCSportsBarea.com and the NBC Sports app. And of course, it's presented by Honda. Zenzatella is on deck. And now timeout is called. Giants lead on a Joe Panic home run. And now they got him picked off, and Samarja is going to run at him, flip it to Crawford. Crawford will tag him out. At Coors Field, any out's a big out. Any out, especially when you eliminate a runner in score position. Now, this is a play that can get called from the bench. Oh. And hey, he had a great jump. And tell me the last guy that got caught doing that? Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds. <laughs> and he would deny that if he was here, by the way. <laughs> he was the sole reason that that's, that play stayed in the game for like 11 years. <laughs> Oh, Barry, if you're listening, we mean it. <laughs> we do here. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. He was around the batting cage the other day, and he's starting to blame us for things that we had nothing to do with, by the way. <laughs> he was at the Warriors parade. A bit outside and low, it's three and two. It's great when you drive to the parade in your car. You just get in the parade. <laughs> uh, a little sharpie on the side. Chop foul. That's not true. He was actually in the uh, NBC Sports Bay Area float. Car float, whatever. Yeah. He was with the toaster guy and Ricky Henderson. Jay Dela Cruz. It's just, I'm glad that Barry's back in the Bay. I mean, he was in Miami last year as part of the staff. Of Don Mattingly's Marlins and yeah, I'm just glad he's back in the bay, back with the Giants. 
never once did I like when he wasn't with the Marlins as a hitting coach kind of out there right yeah did I like him helping guys on other teams I didn't like it that knowledge should stay in the Giants organization I get it and I understand it Zenzatella did not even see that bat nearly hit him yeah they're showing us the um, the mile high purple line where when it was in right field now it's the rooftop in the bars and the gathering places they had that line go all the way across and Bonds was challenged during batting practice that he couldn't hit the line and of course he did. Three two pitch down the left field line that's going to be foul. But that is the longest ball I've ever seen hit because when he hit it up in right field and he hit the purple line. It wasn't right down the line. I mean, it was out towards, you know, right center. I mean, it wasn't even straight away right. Yeah, it's where, right where Park fought. Park fought is. Here's a pop up into center field for Span. So the pickoff helps. Third inning coming up. Slater's going to lead it off. This Pixar Day at AT&T Park, your special event ticket will include a ticket to watch the Giants take on the Mets, a Giants-themed Piston Cup inspired by the movie Cars 3. And a reminder, if you need, if you want these items, you have to get the ticket. If you want the ticket, go to sfgiants.com slash special events. one nothing and a panic home run. Here's the, the batting practice we're talking about with Bonds. It wasn't this one, but it was... This one. And he did it. I mean, it's crazy when you look up as to how high that stripe was where it used to be. I mean, it's just, it's impossible to even think a guy could do that. Here's Austin Slater. Slater, a nice night last night. He had four hits. Uh, it'd be right above where Jack Daniels is right now. And, and we're serious above Jack Daniels. That's where it was. Slater fouls it back. It's a quick 0 2. Slater's night was four for five of the run scored. And the run that he scored was the ninth run that tied the game in the ninth. You know, with all the technology we have now, we probably could find out what the estimated distance would be on that swing of the bat. Outside one and two. It had to be well over 500 feet. I would think so. Although they weren't exactly very generous to 
the dimensions on Bonds' home runs in this park. On the ground to second, where LeMahieu will throw him out. And here's Samarja. Samarja was at the plate last night when Span tried to score on a ball that got away from Tommy Murphy. So he was left standing with two strikes. Here he takes a strike. Two for 27. Zenzatella saving his best stuff for Samarja. That's a good breaking ball. And that one wasn't as good, but Samarja chased for three strike strikeouts now for Zenzatella. The thing I like about Zenzatella is he's a quick worker. Bam rolled out on one pitch in the first inning. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. And it's no balls in one strike. Span slowing it down. He's one of the most deliberate hitters in all of baseball, getting in and getting ready to hit. And a one hopper. And it actually bounced in for a strike. <laughs> but it'll be one and one. Well, cricket style. And it almost hit Span. Two outs, panic on deck. This man had a couple of hits and six at bats last night. And the pitch. Span, it's a drive to right down the line. It is out of here. And it's two nothing. Second home run for the Giants in the game, the fourth of the year for Spann. Well, he does it in the two strike, two out scenario. Watch the breaking ball just drop down and in right at the knees, and he just golfs it out. I mean, the key here is he stays inside enough to keep it fair, but he hits it and starts measuring. Number four. Here's Panic, who hit his fourth of the year in the first inning. And he rolls the first pitch to Desmond, and that's going to end the inning. So Span hits his fourth, and the Giants take a two nothing lead. Senzatella is going to lead things off.
in Baseball on NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by Mr. Pickles Sandwich Shop. Tri-Tip, that's California's go-to barbecue. Introducing your new favorite sandwich, only $9.99. Do nothing. A pair of home runs for the Giants as Zenzatella is going to hit. He's a pretty good hitter. And he takes a call strike. He's four for 24. We don't judge guys if they're pretty good hitters by their numbers. We judge by how they look at the plate. And it's nothing in two. Well, since Dell's got some bat speed, I don't know how well he knows the strike zone looking at that last pitch. But if you're Samarja, 0 2, you shouldn't throw him a strike. He's probably get a hack at it. And a pop up out of play. He is in the swing mode. On deck is Blackman. We're going to come in. And it is inside one and two. Roll foul. Giants have two hits, two home runs. Rockies have three hits, two singles, and a double. Samarja about to throw pitch number 39 to the opposing pitcher. And he rolls this one to Panic. Panic is going to take his time. One out. Well, follow the Giants live with MLB.com at bat, the at bat mobile app. You can stay connected. To the game's best players all season long with game day live video, highlights, radio broadcast, and all kinds of other things. Download MLB.com at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. A lot of Giants fans here this weekend. It was Giants Vacations group came in. We're gonna have dinner tomorrow night. Dave Fleming, our partner, is gonna host it. They are having a ball in the city of Denver. Great destination ballpark to come to if you're thinking about seeing the Giants on the road. He's, he's a good host. Oh, he's fantastic. So Blackman, who struck out, is at the plate and he rolls with a foul. There's Dave and John and DC Darren Chan in the background. Some of the fans here that love the beard of Charlie Blackman. And the pitch is wide, one ball and one strike. Well, the first half that Charlie Blackman is having is quite remarkable. I mean, uh, I'm surprised there aren't more people out here with beards on. 329, 15 homers, 53 RBIs in the leadoff position. This is going to kick foul. Blackman doesn't know it. What's the last time you saw a leadoff hitter have 53 RBIs on June 16th? Yeah. You know. You know, this is the National League. That pitcher hit ninth. He's not a guy that has a high on base percentage. Set it up for Blackman. Over the years, Barry's dad was a leadoff hitter. Bobby Bonds, he had power. He could run. I don't know if Ricky Henderson would have had that many RBIs, but he'd have a few. 53 is a lot. That's a lot of RBIs. And tight, two and two. And we got a ways to go before the All-Star break. Brandon Crawford leads the Giants in RBIs. He has 29. 
give you an example of how special 53 is. And Blackman gets jammed and he's going to have a double. Well, the Giants put a shift on and they opened up the third base line. And Blackman inside outs the two strike pitch. That's a 90 mile an hour cutter. And nobody was home at a third base position. Nice job from Austin Slater to get over and keep the base hit to a double. So here's LeMahieu who rolled a single up the middle for a base hit. Arnado to follow. It's a 2 0 lead. And a strike right at the belt, and it's 0 and 1. 95 mile an hour fastball. The best velocity fastball that Samarja has thrown tonight is 98. And he's the kind of pitcher that definitely builds his fastball as the night wears on. And oftentimes we see his high, highest velocity fastballs around the 90 pitch level. Hit to right. Pence is back. And it's over his head. Coming in to score is Blackman and LeMay who's got a double. It's two to one. The carry at Coors Field has been problematic for the Giants in this series. And here's a back spinner. Think about LeMayhew. He goes to right field well. This got some carry. And uh, Pence, I mean, you saw him take a, a, a step in to the side and it just cannot get back as this thing floats over his head. And Blackman, once he saw that thing hit the wall, an easy score. So here's Arenado. Arenado doubled in the gap in left center field. And a belt tie strike, and it's 0 1. Top of the lineup for the Rockies continues to be so potent. 0 2. 90 mile an hour cutter. Carlos Gonzalez to follow. Pop back and out of play on a high fastball. Next pitch for Samarja will be number 50. Popped up. Joe Panic. Two outs. That was a big league pop up. That was at least a mile high pop up. Literally. Yeah, pop ups go higher here. Here's Gonzalez who hit a soft line drive to Crawford in the first inning.
first pitch runs inside for a ball one ball and no strikes. Called a strike. I think Cedarstrump is the guy who is more consistent down around the knees, but we have definitely seen that pitch at the top of the strike zone called a strike. It's just not a, always an automatic. Guys, 0 for 25. Why would you not swing at that pitch? It's 2 and 0. You get a fastball. You get a runner in score position. You're down a run. Middle in. I know. I mean, he's a middle away guy, and that's where his strength has always been. But right now, he is in a huge slump, and probably because he can't pull the trigger. Two and two. I mean, when you get into a funk as a hitter, your thought process gets weird. You're looking for answers and you're listening to suggestions from everybody. Fish guy at Whole Foods, your barber, the usher, and section 105. That foul. We'll do it again. And you get completely consumed with the slump. You don't take one minute of the day off mentally. You're going good. Hey, not a problem leaving the ball game at the yard. You got it locked in. But when you're in a funk, you take it with you. Three and two. On the ground to Belt. Belt will take it himself, and that'll end the inning. Whew. So a run on two doubles after three. It's two to one. You buy your California Ford dealers last night. Ty Block is a pinch hitter. He had an RBI single in the top of the eighth off of Chad Qualls. And uh, in that 
Very nice comeback for the Giants. Ty Block had something to do with it offensively. I think he wanted to smile, but he was kind of holding it back. Well, that was the talk of the clubhouse today. When you do something unexpected, it tends to light up the group. Belt takes low with Pence and then Crawford. There's three, four, and five hitters. Belt struck out looking in the first inning. And a call strike at 91. It's a ball and a strike. And try to get that run back and more. Belt rolls it foul. It's one and two. Give you the idea about Brandon Belt, and we've watched him now throughout his career how he, he gets hot, then he cools off. Belt is now two for his last 25. And that pitch runs inside. And 0 for his last 13. But, uh, you can get hot and all of a sudden you just forget about all that stuff. Well home runs make you do that. They make you forget. And tight again it's three and two. Fastball right above the hands, and that's exactly where Sensatella wanted to put it. Take a look at how Sensatella went after him. He stayed away, and then all of a sudden, late, he started pounding the hands up and in with high velocity. And in the end, that was the pitch that sent him back to the dugout. Here's Pence. Hunter Pence takes a strike. Pence rolled out to first in the first. And he rolls this one, but it'll be LeMahieu who can't come up with it. I don't believe what I just saw. I don't either. Usually the six foot four inch LeMahieu with the long arm and the extendo reach, when he goes down and he drops his glove towards the ball, it doesn't fall short. Now this isn't going to make any sense, but it was too easy of a tough play. Yeah, well, and I'm with you on that. <laughs> well, make it hurt. Here's Crawford. Too easy of a tough play. I need a T-shirt that has that said. I mean, over the years, we have a closet full of t shirts like that that just nobody would ever wear except us, or maybe our wives to go to bed. Pence with his lead. On the ground foul. I still have my. Dig Yabble got him t shirt somewhere. Yeah, that's a good one. That's the greatest <laughs> call I've ever heard. Oh. It's true about our wives wearing the t shirts. There was a giveaway t shirt one time in San Diego. Tony Gwynn t shirts, and it was really soft. My wife wore that sh shirt for 16 years, which means I slept next to Tony Gwynn for 16 years. One and one to Crawford. One and two. The late great Tony Gwynn, by the way. We miss that guy. Yes, we do. I didn't miss him when I was playing against him, though. He was hard on me. Great hitter. Big home run last night for Crawford, opposite field. Well, so. and he did it off of Jake McGee, who just doesn't give up home runs. 
A three run home run. The first three run shot the Giants have hit all year. Well, he's got six. I'll bet over half of them have gone to the opposite field. In tight. And now it's a full count. And maybe we'll see Pence go. We'll let you know. Pence goes. Swing and a miss. Here's the throw. It's high, and they got him anyway. Strikeout double play, bottom of the fourth coming up. NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by Amici's East Coast Pizzeria. When you want the best pizza in town, Amici delivers. By Cresco. Need a tool? We got that. Need instruction? We got that too. Here in downtown Denver, it's a 2-1 lead for the Giants. Weather's been fabulous here in Denver. Very hot. And the sunsets have been inspiring. Inspiring. Look at that. Here's Desmond who struck out in the first. Sunrises haven't been that bad either. Meaning that you've seen them both. Yes, I have. All right. It's my kind of guy, just like the old days. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm going out this time. I'm not coming in. Line drive. One on. Here's Tapia. There's the sticky stuff. Better than pine tar. Cotton candy. Happy a cute one off the end of the bat, and he got it into center field for a hit. And a strike. Tried to pull the trigger, and it's inside. They even counted a ball and a strike. Just a bit inside. Hill is in at third. Fouled off the backstop, one and two. See, he'll, he'll relax now with two strikes. 
you're on the left side of the infield, I mean, you've got to think, hurry up with Toppy. I mean, he's that fast out of the box. Medium ground ball. I mean, you got to hurry it up. And on the ground to panic. And Joe Panic will throw him out. Two down. Joe Here's Amarista. I, I love it when he goes down to one knee, Dwayne Kuyper style. We used to see you do this a lot, especially late in the game at Candlestick. Drop that right knee. Now I mean, you do it because you kind of thinking that you're going to get an in betweener. Is he thinking to do that or is he just doing it? No, I mean, I think he can see that. It's look, he's only going to go a step to his right, so he could just drop down. But also think about the hops that you're going to get on a fast infield. You can do it at, at first, you can do it at second, and sometimes if you're playing in at third, you can do it. But unless it's a one hop bullet, you cannot do it at short. Popped up. Slater. And a nice inning for the Shark. Through four, it's 2 1 Giants, and it'll be Hundley to hit first. It happened in 1952 at the Polo Grounds. Down by three runs in the bottom of the ninth. Bobby Thompson hit a walk-off. Grand slam off of Willard Schmidt. Of the Cardinals, Giants won 8-7. It is only walk-off grand slam with the Giants trailing by three runs in franchise history. How about that? Did not know that. It's so cool. he hit another really big home run in his career. It's a cool fact. Bobby Thompson, the king of the walk-offs. Here's Hunley. Hunley Hill Slater. Antonio Zenzatella. And the pitch swinging a foul out of play. Got a man making a play. Brought his glove. Played it off the wall. That's, he earned that foul ball. Played the carom. Oh and two. Yep. The guy with the Rockies hat on sitting next to the guy in the pink shirt. He's the guy that made the play. Hundley takes a close pitch. It's one and two. Giants fan. I think he led the guy to his right. I think he 
let him use his glove. Lock two and two. That's what I'm going with. Yep. I think it's a good story. I think you should stick with it. It's been the Kapalua, it looks like. Two two pitch. Here it is to Hunley. Hunley rolls it into the hole. Amarista, a throw in the dirt, and it's not in time. I don't know. I'm sure the Rockies will take a look at it. Well, as it was, it was a heck of a play from Amarista to even make it close. I mean, that's when you're running down the line as Hunley was, and you're thinking, I'm, 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 I'm trying to outrun the baseball. I think it's a tie. I don't think that's going to get reviewed. I think it's too close, and now they're going to take a look at it. Perfect. Well, they saw more than one replay of it. It's close. The question is, is there enough there to overturn it? It's got to be in the back of the glove. I don't know. Fifth inning. Nobody out. I, mean, I think that's what is the motivation for Bud Black, the skipper of the Rockies, is that the, this is a leadoff base hit. They overturn it, then it's a quick out. I think it's a tie. Yeah, I do too. And I think, Mike, this is one where if there's two outs, they may not. Asked to take a look at it, but with nobody out, it's probably not a bad play on their part. No, I agree. I think the leadoff scenario is what was the motivation. Due to a pregame technical issue with the replay system, each club is going to be afforded its normal manager challenge, but will have unlimited crew chief reviews for the remainder of the game. Now they said this in the first inning. We heard a slight delay at the start of the game because of the malfunction with the technical difficulties. We had no clue what was going on. We were speculating that it was a late call from the league office that was saying that Hunter Strickland was to begin his suspension. Not the case. Giants are full force tonight with 25 guys. Strickland in the bullpen, although you will not see him pitch tonight. He's pitched three days in a row. Zenzatella keeps asking for a different baseball and Cedarstrom's trying to listen to what's going on in New York. Just not enough there, but I do think it was worth a gamble only because it was a leadoff. And that was our replay review. It was presented by Xfinity. So I like give, it. Give Hunley a hit. You don't see many catchers get in few singles. That has to feel good. Hill hit a ball well to right center field that Blackman tracked down. Slater to follow. And Hill looks at a ball. One ball and no strikes. Only with his lead. Double play ball. Four, six, three. And that's one the Giants will look at. Although I don't think they'll challenge it, but it was close. Bad parts all over the infield. No go. So Zenzatella gets the double play ball, and here's Slater.
Slater rolled out to second. And he takes a ball. One ball and no strikes. Giants now back to back innings have been involved in a double play against them. Two and oh. If you're Slater, let it fly. Get one up in Coors Field. This ballpark is so inviting to every hitter. You, you just think long ball when you walk in this place. You can't help it. Especially the last couple of days when it's been around 90 degrees with both teams have taken batting practice. Balls are just well, flying out of here. The batting practice is a great indicator. By the way, as I look around, it looks like a sellout tonight. Good crowd. I think they're going to have good crowds all weekend. They had over 40,000 last night as Austin Slater takes his walk, and that's significant in that he gets the margin up to the plate. Samar just struck out in the third. Remember, his happy zone is down and in. Well, and I hope they put the takes out on here. If he's ever going to do damage and hit a home run, it's going to come on a first pitch. Fastball challenge. Outside, the one ball and no strikes. I mean, just the way Samarja gets to the batter's box and how he takes his stride, he's looking to yank to the power side of the field, left field. And with the power that he has, I mean, he could flip him out to right. His batting practice yesterday was as good as anybody in a, in, in a Giants uniform taking BP. Two and zero. Oh. I would not put the take sign on here. No. I would just let him, let him wail. Center field hit well. Blackman on the move. It is out of here. <laughs> no take sign. No, not in a 2 0 count. His first home run is a giant. And he takes on right center field. Easy. He almost broke Slater's forearm <laughs> on the bash. Oh, what's a football player? Always a football player. That lit up the dugout. And he picks up his first two RBIs on the year. It's the 2 0 challenge with the fastball from Sensatella at 96. A little bit of a bat flip. <laughs> Span out of play. Well, he finally blinked. That's his third career home run. And that fence almost took it away from him, didn't it? Yeah, it tried. This man takes inside, one ball and one strike. And he had a pretty good home run try, too. Span chops this one, and that'll end the inning. Samarja hits the third home run of the night for the Giants, and he got that one. It's bye bye, baby, and it's 4 1.
in favor of the Giants. is presented by the authority of the San Francisco Giants and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Giants Baseball Club, LLC. Well, on Sunday, the 25th of June, the Giants will look back at 50 years of the Summer of Love. The first 20,000 fans are going to receive a Summer of Love blanket presented by the DeYoung Museum. Visit sfgiants.com. Popped up. And it's going to be Span who can't hang on. So Samarge is going to have to pitch through it. It'll end up being a hit. Just a Coors Field special. He thought that it might be Crawford who had the chance, but Span called him off. And that's exactly what an infielder wants to hear, just on the tip of the glove. So, winds up being a base hit, and a leadoff hitter gets on for Colorado. And I think Spann's quite surprised he didn't catch it. Well, the problem now is you are going to end up having to face this top of the order after Zenzatella with somebody on, or maybe more than somebody on. Outside, one ball and no strikes. You know, one thing about a home run, if you hit it as a pitcher, it can geek you up a little bit, and you can take it back out to the mound with you. Home runs will definitely give you a surge in adrenaline. Run it foul. One ball and one strike. Last home run, by the way, for Samarja was May 15th, 2013 at Wrigley against, what do you think? Rockies? The Rockies. Walters with his lead. The bunt. It's a good bunt. Samarja off balance to Panic and a nice play by Panic. Now Samarja and Hundley converge on the play and Samarja wound up making the throw without taking a little crow hop to set his balance with his feet. And it winds up being a, a little nasty short hop for Panic to dig out. But a great bunt from Sensatella. And 
Joe Panic doesn't have the big floppy first baseman. His glove. He's got the smallest glove on the field. Good play. See the numbers for the first three hitters in this lineup 13 for 19. And the pitch is wide. We mentioned the 53 RBIs that Charlie Blackman has. The most RBIs by a leadoff hitter in the regular season, Darren Erstad had 100 back in, in uh, 2000 with the Angels. That's since 1914. He's going to have another RBI here. It's going to be four to two. And Blackman's got maybe more than a double. Here's the throw to Crawford. Crawford to Hill. And he made it. You know, one of the real strengths of Charlie Blackman is his use of the whole field. He's got a real solid opposite field approach against righties, lefties, doesn't matter. He goes where the location of the pitch is. Here he pounds 94 right through the gap. We talk about the speed of the infield. Not enough is said about the, but about the speed of the gaps here. They're very quick. And Bill Blackman, a center fielder, knows that all too well. He knows if you get through the gaps, you got to think three. So the top of the lineup stays hot. So LeMahieu is going to hit with one out. Remember this inning started out with a little pop up. That glanced off the glove of Denard Spann. Continues to just burn the Giants in the first two games in this series. One of the best opposite field hitters in the National League, BJ Mayhew. So Arenado's going to hit. He doubled and he's popped up. No balls in one strike. Exaggeration when I'm talking about getting a little over amped when you hit a home run. It, it, it can affect your rhythm. And it can affect the feel, the touch you have, especially with your specialty pitches. One and two. Gonzalez is on deck. It to right field. So LeMahieu down to second. Boy, just nice two strike hitting. You know, it, you don't think of Arnado as a guy that does a lot of taking swing out in two strike counts, but that's exactly what he did here. I mean, he just sort of just served it to right field. 
That was not a hanger. That was a corner pitch fastball at a high velocity. And he just slapped it into right field. Here's Gonzalez. And Gonzalez takes a strike. Just again having a problem pulling the trigger. You kind of get caught between thoughts. Should I look slider speed? Should I look fastball? Should I look in? Should I look away? Paralysis through analysis. Another little pop up. And it's going to be Stan who makes the catch. And that'll bring up Desmond. Desmond is 0 for 2. Last at bat, he lined out to Span. Down the right field line, foul. Ooh. Desmond so aggressive on that first pitch. He's a little disappointed. He thought off the crack of the bat that was going to be inside the lines, and then at the last instant, it just sliced foul. So it's no balls in one strike. Double look to second. And it's just inside. One ball and one strike. So hard to dig it deep. That was pitch number 80. Again, one and two. See where Hunley sets up. One and two. Hit to right. Ball carry into right. And gone. So Samarja gets beat on a fly ball to right. And again, two strikes, 92 mile an hour cut. And off the crack of the bat, Samarja so thinking, I'm out of it. And then all of a sudden, oh no. A three run bomb, a five run inning. And now he trails by two runs. And he can't believe it. So here's Tapia. Now he's got to get back into the at bat. It's a hard thing to do. When you go in an inning with a three run lead, and now all of a sudden you trail by two. But it's Coors Field. They almost like you have to expect you're going to give up runs. But you've got to clean your mind. You have to erase 
the bad memory and you got to get on the next pitch and commit to it. Here's the 1 1 to Tapia. And he rolls it to Panic, and that's going to end the inning. Damage done. 6 4 Colorado. The ballpark ticket offer for the weekend Marlins series July 8th and 9th starting at only $99 you'll receive four game tickets and a free round trip BART ticket to get you to and from the ballpark. AT&T Park is BARTable. Go to sfgiants.com slash BART for tickets. 6-4 Colorado. So here's Panic, and Panic takes a pitch low and away. One ball and no strikes. I, I believe that first pitch they end up calling a strike. Panic homered in the first, rolled out to Desmond in the third. And here he takes a pitch wide, two and one. Well, work to do. It is Coors Field. Hey, I saw a team pretty recently down nine to one in the seventh inning, come back and tie a score. That's right. That was last night. Down the right field line, that'll be trouble. So panic is on the move. It dies on Gonzalez. Panic is going to stop. At second, if you're down by two, that's what you have to do, and Belt's going to hit. Man, you can't make the first out at third. So here's Belt. Belt has not figured out Zenzatella. He struck out twice, once looking and once swinging. Uh, both times, the strikeout pitch was the fastball. So if he's coming into this at bat, he's got to sit there and think one thing: gas and gear up for it. Down low, one ball and no strikes. Pence to follow, and then Crawford. Belt on the ground to first. Desmond is going to take it himself. Panic moves to third. 
And that'll bring up Hunter Pence. Well, down two runs, you'll take a productive out. It's not going to help a guy who's been in a slump. Brandon Bell, that's not going to really make him feel that much better. And now Bell now 0 for his last 16 and 2 for his last 27. This place will make you shake your head. On the ground. This will score panic. So it's six five. Earthquakes take on Sporting KC tomorrow at 6 p.m. on NBC Sports California. And here's Crawford with two outs and nobody on. Crawford is rolled out and he's struck out. Pence did what he had to do. Loved to have had a hit. Love to have hit one out of the park. One thing you have to do is you have to knock the run in, and that's what he did. And you had to stay out of the strikeout situation. And then you're right, they played the defense back. Adam Avino, the right hander, starting to heat up for the Rockies. Crawford takes high. Eric Cooper, third base umpire, said no swing. So Bud Black just told Tony Walters, go out and talk to him. Give Ottavino a chance to get heated up. 82 pitches. I mean, that's not really a lot of pitches. At the end of six inning, you want to be 90 or less. But you also have to remember, too, that since the tell is 22 years old, so they are going to protect them. See if Crawford gets a fastball here that he can drive. It's three and zero. Oh. He'll have the green light. Well, they'll turn him loose. He's a good three zero -oh hitter. Down the strike. If he walks Crawford, it may be his last hitter. Yeah, I think you're right. Or if Crawford gets a hit. Check swing foul. It's three and two. Crawford's got it going good. He didn't check too many swings. And that'll end the inning. Giants get a run closer. It's 6-5 Colorado.
Sports Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. By Heffernan Insurance Brokers, insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit hefins.com. By Jack in the Box, come try the new sweet or spicy barbecue bacon cheeseburger and chicken sandwich. Limited time only. By Southwest, yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. By the all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. And by AAA. Get a free Giants welcome mat. Restrictions apply. Go to AAA.com slash Giants or to a AAA branch for details. Here in Denver, it's a 6-5 lead for the Rockies as Amarisa is going to lead things off against Jeff Samarja. This will be pitch number 86. And it's a bit high. Amarista ran up as if to bunt it. And it's one ball and no strikes. Amarista, Walters, and then Zenzatella. And uh, a strike right now. Walters is just getting to the on deck circle. Probably see a pinch hitter, I would think. Yeah, I got to believe that. Uh, since tell is nice uh, over again 22 years old we protect him in that way. Walter's standing right behind. Amarista. This is hit on the ground to belt. Opened up the fifth with a pop up that fell in front of Span. And he takes a strike. Valencia is on deck. And that pitch rolls to Valencia and it's one ball and one strike. I believe I said Valencia it's Valencia who's on deck. And it's high, two balls and one strike. Walters is not your average catcher when it comes to foot speed. He can put some pressure on the infield on a medium ground ball. Very athletic. He's also one of those guys, every time we come and see the Rockies, he's got to do batting stance. Do you play with a lot of guys like that? Yeah, there are more guys then than now. Everybody pretty much stays with one stance. Three and two. Yeah, I never played against Cal Ripken, but every time you'd see him in the highlights, it seemed like he had a different yeah. batting yeah. stance. Yeah, they said he had thousands. So the open stance by Walters. And that is wide open. And he got him. This little cutter. See you later. Third strikeout for Samarja. No walks on the night. Going to be Story instead of Valeta. Story started last night and he went 0 for 4. So he comes in with a 211 average, but the thing about Story is is he's just got tremendous power. And he's got a little uppercut to his swing. I mean he's got a swing built for lift. 
And he's not looking to do anything but try and hit one out of the bleachers. I mean, that's his mindset. And he will swing hard. Center field. It's got carry. Span back and gone. Pinch hit home run. And just like that, the Rockies get the run back. Home run number nine. Ninety-four mile an hour challenge, and he was sitting on that speed. He took the first pitch curveball. And here just barrels it. Home run number nine. So here's Blackman. Blackman's two for three with a couple of doubles. Make that a triple and a double. And he takes a strike. So Samarja creeping up on a hundred pitches. And that pitch is wide. It's two balls and a strike. See how far back Pence is in right field. I mean, he's deep, as deep could be. You know, and it, and a lot of pressure on outfielders in this ballpark because of the gaps and how fast they are and how fast. The outfield area is when they move the walls back because they had to. Balls fly so lively here at Denver. They created a lot of open space. I mean, it, this is not a comfortable place to play. It, you play a four game series here like the Giants will this weekend. Come Sunday night when they get on a plane to go to Atlanta, they, their outfielders are going to be tired. Yeah. Blackman trying to walk this off. He does have a shin guard on his right ankle. And uh, it's an interesting how you never see a ball hit the shin guard. That hit his knee. Or just below. Is it a shin burger or a knee burger? Ooh, shin burger. He ought to just call timeout, go ask for Tony Walter's shit guard, and just cover up his whole leg. Samarja is due to hit fourth in the seventh. And that'll end the inning. Story hits the home run. It's back to a two run lead, 7 5, Colorado.
Our Toyota game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Giants led in this one, 2 0 in a couple of home runs, but then the big five spot in the fifth inning for Colorado. Zenzatella is going to leave. Uh, uh, Rockies are bringing in a new pitcher, and the Rockies have 11 hits tonight. Giants are still very much in this. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune-up and brake experts. So the right-hander Adam Ottavino, number zero, coming into this ball game, 27th time he's come in. Look at the strikeouts, 29, 23 in the third innings. Good stuff. You'll see mid 90s fastball with a big crossover step. Probably the biggest of the National League West, and a hellacious slider. And if you're hitting off of from the right side, I mean, you really have to fight yourself to keep that front shoulder locked in because that big crossover step will make you give. Two balls and no strikes. And I think it's unique about Ottavino with that type of a crossover step, you're really cutting off a lot of your lower body power. And yet he still throws 94, yeah. 96. Call strike. A couple years ago, went through Tommy John. You can see all the stress he puts on his arm because of that big crossover. But it's all about his deception, and uh, it is not a comfortable at bat. You can see just looking right over the top of him with his center field camera. Big motion, and you can see that looks pretty clean from the side. But when you get in front of him or behind him, you see just how big that crossover step is. You realize that there are torque points in your motion that are really stressful on your arm. And Hunley out swinging. Well, on Saturday the 24th, the first 30,000 fans will receive a Giants retro bobblehead presented by Coca-Cola. And a reminder, the first pitch is at 4.15 on that 24th of June. So join us as the Giants take on the Mets Friday, June 23rd through the 25th. Here's Aaron Hill, who's 0 for 2. And a breaking ball that falls in for a strike. That batter's box, you would swear that when Ottavino releases that breaking ball, it starts about six inches behind you. That is true. Hill, does he hold up? He does not. Gabe Morales, first base umpire, ringing him up. Gorvit Torrealba. Former Rocky still has fans here. I think your V covered the National League West, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he wore a few uniforms. One two pitch to Hill. Hill pops this one back and out of play. Slow two and two. So Adavino, after disposing of Hunley, goes after Aaron Hill. 
And Hill pops it up. So that'll be playable right near the bag at second. Two outs. And here's Slater. It's going to be an interesting at bat. First time that Slater has seen Adovino. I mean, you can look on all the film you want, but until you get into the batter's box against this unorthodox delivery of Adovino, you really don't know what it's like. But one thing that Slater has is a real good approach to right field, which is kind of what you have to have when you have a big sweep and breaking ball coming at you from the side. There's a call strike to Slater. Slater is 0 for 1. Kelby Tomlinson is on deck. Mr. Posey getting the bat. Swing and a foul back. So Slater had a good rip. He hung in there. It's now one and two. That's pretty solid front side on that breaking ball. He was trying to hit a two run homer there with nobody on base. It's a healthy rip. No give in that swing. Look out. You know when you're a young hitter and you get to the big leagues you're going to see a lot. It's not just stuff you're going to see a lot of deception a lot of funkiness. A lot of nastiness on a daily basis. All part of your education. Two and two hanging in there pretty good. He is. Kid. He really is. A two strike hitter, too. He proved that last night's ball game against Greg Holland. Rockies closer. Fouled again. That's 94 on the outer half of the plate. Well, he was on it. Head stayed right through it. Derek Laws, he's going to be coming into the game. the battle out of Eno does and that'll do it laws coming in he's going to face the beef at seven five actually some is coming out good stuff
It's a 7-5 lead. Is Jeff Samarja to go after DJ LeMayhew? And the first pitch is high. LeMayhew is three for three. And he's seven for eight in the series. There's a call strike. Well, and as competitive as Jeff Samarja is, and he knows he's LeMayhew's got a three for three going on him. I think he absolutely wanted to get back out there and get another shot at him. And that's tap foul. One and two. Top of the lineup for the Rockies has really been the story in this series. Arnado on deck, and then Gonzalez. Why two and two. One two three guys last night with nine hits tonight they've got seven 16 hits and two nights from the top three guys. Blackman LeMayhew and Arnado. I don't remember the last time I saw something like that. Probably here. Yeah you're probably right. Here's what they've done two triples, six doubles, nine RBIs. They've scored 12 runs, 16 for 23. Wow. Samarja is about ready to get kicked out of the game. Well, he's frustrated. You can understand it. And a cut fastball in the inside corner, and he's following the pitch. And no umpire wants to get shown up, especially a guy who's been around as long as Cedarstrom. He's the crew chief. So Bruce Boach is going to get a few things off his chest. I mean, I mean the, it's other, a, the other thing that uh, Cedarstrom was upset with is. It looked like Hunley bumped him, trying to stop him from going out to talk to Samarja. Yeah, well you may see Bochi get tossed, and there it is. And you know what Boach is saying? Cedarstrom started to walk out to Samarja. So, you know, in a lot of ways, that in the eyes of Samarja is thinking that there is going to be a confrontation, correct? Yeah. Let's take a look at the 3 2 pitch. And watch Hundley's reaction when he didn't get the strike. So just starts coming in. And now Hundley's thinking, I got to keep the big fellow in the game here. So he just kind of gets casually in front. And Cedarstrom says, Don't touch me. And let's take a look at where the pitch was. <laughs> yeah, well, could have good enough to be called a strike. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and auto service, your trusted oil change tune up and brake experts.
Syracuse tomorrow at noon. In our long friggin' live will come on the air. Will it be at 11 o'clock on NBC Sports Bay Area? And the season Giants games are available to stream live on the NBC Sports app. So it ended up being a double switch. It's 7 5 Rockies. Tomlinson goes in to play third. He'll hit ninth, and Derek Law is the new pitcher. Take a look at what he has done. This is the 30th appearance for Derek Law this year, 372 ERA. And he's going to take on Nolan Arenado right off the get go. So Tomlinson at third, and here's Arenado, who's two for three. And the first pitch is a big breaking ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. Some arms are still steaming. I don't blame him. Swing and a miss. The ball gets away from Hundley. Maybe a pass ball. So six plus inning, 11 hits allowed. And it really has left the big man shaking his head. A couple of home runs would have been routine fly balls at AT&T here. Earned runs. That was an off-speed pitch. Two balls in one strike. Now yeah, Arnado knows it. I mean, that was a 79 mile an hour slider or curveball that just sort of squirted out of the hand of Derek Law. Two and two. Rockies with 43 wins on the year. And they have really lit this town up. Evidenced by the 40 plus thousand crowd last night. Sell out tonight. Got him. So maybe that's how you get Art out of You throw hanging sliders at him. Tom is coming. Because that was a hanger, and that was a whiff. Gonzalez is 0 for 3. And a call strike. No overshift, but Crawford playing nearly behind the bag at second. Popped up. Can Pence get there? He cannot. Another Coors base hit, putting runners at first and third. So Gonzalez breaks the string. So here's Desmond. Well, Gonzalez left the box, and he was just a light jog, and he had already conceded that that was going to be an out. But as deep as Hunter Pitts was playing in right field, there's just no way he could cover that much ground to get in. Perfect no man's land. And Gonzalez really should have been standing at second base. So here's Desmond. Desmond hits it very high into center field. This will knock in a run. And it's 8-5.
Tapia is one for three. Tennis fans trying to be patient. Heads up, Gonzalez is thinking about going. Well, when you've got speed in the batter's box, like Tapia, it's not a bad gamble if you're Bud Black, steal or, or at least attempt to steal Gonzalez. If he's out, hey, you lead off next inning with speed with Tapia. If he's safe, you got him in score position. Yep. Lotus called the throw over to first base. Lotus picking up the, the reins when Bochy get kicked out. Two and zero. Oh. See if Gonzalez goes. He does. And a base hit to right. See this how Gonzalez slid, and then it rolls past Hunter Pence. And that means Gonzalez is going to score, and it means that Tapia is going to be at third. For a second, I thought the Giants were going to catch a break because Gonzalez never knew where the ball was. But the ball just sort of comes up and handcuffs Hunter Pence. And you see Gonzalez going down. Now he gets up and heads over to third base, and now he knows it's an easy score once it got past Pence. Well, I think we saw Crawford Deke. So here's Amarista. And it's low and almost to the backstop. See if Crawford deked. Yep, he did. Didn't take much. Well, I mean, it's if you know a guy like Gonzalez when he steals a base, he's not going to look into the hitter. He's going to keep his eyes at second base. I mean, you could do that as a middle infielder. Rope to right, and Pence can't get it. Tapia scores. It's 10-5. They're picking on Hunter Pence. And with two outs, that'll bring up Tony Walters. It's what happens in this park. Well, I mean, there's nothing normal about this ballpark. I mean, everything is affected by the altitude here. The carry, the size of the outfield, and it, it could absolutely have you talking to yourself. In the dirt, and that'll score it away from Hundley. Dave Rigetti is going to try to calm the storm here. You know, Derek Laws came in. He struck out Arnado. Gonzalez with a bloop. Desmond with a sacrifice fly. Well, sometimes you go out there, and, and especially with a young pitcher, you know, you, you, if, if the defense is starting to get a little sloppy, you go out there and say, listen, you can't get the strikeout mode. You have to trust your defense no matter what. And then there's other times you go out there and say, you know what? You need to strike this guy out. And I'm not sure what time that was for Rigetti. But definitely two possibilities for the conversation between a pitching coach and a pitcher. Ninety four at the knees. Walters a swing and a miss one ball and one strike. One.
wanting to. So the pep talk from Dave Rigetti, at least on the last two pitches, have been effective. Going up top. Most of the at bat had gone down around the knee, so we established low in the eye of Walters. When that happens, you could go right across the letters. You got mid 90 velocity like long, yeah, it's a good pitch. And that will end the inning. Now the Giants have some work to do. It's 10 5, Colorado. Brought to you by Coors Banquet. September 3rd, 2008, right here at Coors Field. A very meaningful home run as Scott McClain hit his first career Major League home run off Stephen Register of the Rockies. The significance of that is McClain spent 15 seasons in the minor leagues where he had 291 home runs, and then four seasons in Japan where he had 71 home runs. 362 home runs in professional baseball, and he stepped up and did this. Hit his first big league home run and was extremely emotional after the game. The boys in the dugout loved it. Bruce Bochy loved it. And for that man right there, the native of Atascadero, Scott McLean, he had a big league homer. And that is our timeless moment brought to you by Coors Banquet. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service, your trusted oil change tune up and brake experts. So, Chris Russell, the new pitcher for these Colorado Rockies. Russell, one of three left handers they have in their bullpen. It's kind of their long man. Take it on Kelby Tomlinson. And Russell, a little 90s fastball. He'll two and four seam. He's got a curveball slider and a changeup. But he has outstanding corner command. And really a big part of their bullpen. He's their long guy. On the ground is short. And Marista, they got him. And Marisa a high throw, but Desmond hung on. And here's Span. Span is one for three. He homered in the third inning. With Joe Panic on deck. And the pitch is low. Here's the home run by Span. 
That was a two strike count a little breaking ball down and in popped it out of here And that made it a two nothing ball game And a strike on the inside corner Stan's going to ask for time. He wants to control the at bat like he usually does. And he takes a little low. Two and one. Giants need base runners. Gets this one into right center field, and Gonzalez is not going to get there. And Span should end up at third and maybe more. As he's going to hit the bag at second, and he'll be standing with the triple. Right in between them. Take a look at the pitch. A little cut fastball in the outside corner. And he did split the uprights between Gonzalez and Blackman, the center fielder. So here's Panic. He'll hit with the infield back. And he fouls this one down the left field line and out of play. Home run and a double. Tonight for Joe Panic. And down the right field line, he's got another one. See if he can end up at third. He is going to put on the brakes. It's seven or make that ten six. Just smothered the down and in location. So panic putting nine points on the bat and average tonight. Covering that little cutter at 85. Stay hot, Joe Panic. Here's Belt. Belt is 0 for 3. Hits one to center field. Blackman broke back. Now he comes in. And he'll get there to make the catch. Bell 0 for 4. And here's Pence. The Rockies starting to get a little more activity in their bullpen. Sam Dyson's up and throwing in the Giants bullpen. Pence picked up an RBI in the six on a ground ball. He's one for three. And he takes low. One ball and one strike. And 
bit outside. Two and one. Just trying to dibble that outside corner with cut. The league has known that for a lot of this year, Pitts has had a hard time staying in with that front shoulder, and he's pulled off the outside corner. And when we see him against lefties or righties, they work that side of the plate. Here's a good spot for Hunter Pence to lay into one with Crawford on deck. And they need a bowl of lightning, no doubt. Three and two. Change up and a good one. And that's what Russell does. I mean, he doesn't give in to the count. Whatever he has, whatever movement he can throw, he'll throw it any time. Has Pitts way out front. And that's the problem. You start to think now at three and two, he's going to throw it again. <laughs> On the ground and a base hit. And here comes Panic. And the throw is way offline. And now Pence is going to trot into second base. Tapia thought the on deck hitter was home plate. <laughs> well, hey, if you're going to make a wild throw, make a good one, huh? But here come the Giants. Again, making noise. Just like they did last night. And that was not a bad pitch either. He kind of tucked it in the outside corner. Pitts goes out there and hooks it through the five and a half hole on the left side of the infield. And now watch. That's one of the best left handed sliders we've seen all year. I mean, it, it, given what the score is, if you're Tapia, you throw the ball to second base. That's a young player's mistake. <laughs> Rufford is 0 for 3. Pitcher down the Rockies bullpen is Jordan Lyles. And he had a flame on red alert to get ready. And he's good to go now. I imagine this will be the last hitter that Russell faces. Here's Lyles. Hundley would like to hit. He's on deck. It's 10 7. A one and two. Well, the girls try to be patient. Crawford. Tapia. And that'll end the inning. Giants put two on the board. They cut into the lead. It's now 10 7, Colorado.
brought to you by T-Mobile. We'll take a look at the scheduled starters. The rest of this stand here in Denver tomorrow. It's going to be the right-hander Matt Cain taking on Kyle Freeland. And then uh, Sunday, Ty Block taking on Tyler Chatwood. And that's our unlimited baseball break. Right now, a new pitcher for the Giants. When it's time for a change thing, Speedy, oil change and auto service, your trusted oil change tune-up and break experts. You were saying? Oh, it's going to be Sam Dyson making his third appearance as a Giant. And for Dyson, who had big-time mechanical problems this year, the very first outing he had back in San Francisco was not a good one mechanically. However, his next outing, he made a correction with his delivery, shortened his throwing circle, and had a nice inning. So this becomes another opportunity to layer that confidence that he had following his second outing. Dyson, a power sinker guy. You're going to see high mid-90s velocity with big-time sink. Here he's facing Valeka, who takes a call strike. He's also got a little slider and a changeup. To 29 for Valeka. Foul back gets nothing in two. So two pitches, two sl the sliders. Blackman on deck, and then LeMahieu. 10 7. Dyson got him. What was that at 90? I think it was a cut. Take a look at the movement. I mean, you're up there looking for big time sink, and you get three cutters, three sliders, all in the outside corner. I mean, and that's again exactly where he wanted to throw those pitches. So for a guy who had a problem controlling the ball his first outing, it hasn't been a problem his last two outings. So Blackman's two for four. And he drives this one to right. And Hunter Pence will put it away. Two outs. Oh, take that, Dad. Easy. Don't beat up the old man. Well, she looks just like him. Yep. <laughs> they can't beat him up now because they really start doing it when they're 15. Yes, they do. For about four years, then they come back to you. LeMahieu, three for three with a walk. Takes a strike. This is a different Dyson than we saw the first time he pitched in a Giants uniform. And everything's calmed down right now. The corrections that they have made with him have, are paying off. Four hit night for LeMahieu. And another at bat where he goes to right field to get those hits. What's new? Well, he just wears out that hole between first and second. Here's Arenado, who's two for four. Watch him inside out this ball the other way. That yeah, belt was kind of leaning towards first. If he's leaning towards second, he's got a shot. It's a game of leans. Yes, it is. Sometimes. Well, if it's 
that's a a three run deficit it'll be Holland Lyles will pitch if it's more than that. Side was right thigh. Just a piece. Oh, it was on the D. This pass did not help a whole lot if you take a direct hit to the knee. They just don't. The fourth hit of the night for LeMahieu, second night in a row he's done it. That's the seventh time in his career. Goes. Here's Hundley's throw, and it's going to be late. It's his fourth of the year. Now you got to change signs. Yeah, usually pretty simple. First sign after two, second sign, last sign, first sign. Nice, and he's only got a couple pitches he's going to throw at. He's got to change it, but we haven't seen him throw it yet. It's been all sinkers and cutters. He calls it a slider. It's a little nickel slider, not a big one. A little confusion in the side, so let's step off and start over. Hundley's thinking. I hope we're on the same page. You don't want to get crossed up on a power sinker no. that's heavy. Two and two. Heavy sinker, mid 90s, as big as Dyson could throw it. I mean, that, that could do some damage on your hand if you catch it wrong. And a full count. Carlos Gonzalez, chalk it up. Here's the payoff to Arenado, and it's foul back. And we'll do it again. Off a pretty good pitch from Dyson. And he's been nailing that outside location consistently. He has. I mean, the last two outings, if you had concern for the release point of Dyson and concern for his control, I mean, he hasn't shown any signs of it. not having command of the ball. Denny coming up. It'll be Holland. And Hundley's going to lead things off.
Giants baseball for East Giants Giants post game live. You're going to get highlights, reaction, and you're going to get analysis, and it's all coming up for a full hour right after the game. 10 7 Rockies. And the new pitcher. What do we have? Well, Greg Holland. Greg Holland. And last night, the very first blow and save opportunity of the year for him. He's been perfect prior to that. 23 saves on the year. You're going to see a big fastball, mid to high 90s, from a high three quarter release. He's got a curveball slider and a split, and they can all strike you out. Other than that, he's average. Gorky Hernandez is on deck, and then it'll be Slater. And Huntley pops up the first pitch. Desmond coming over, and he's going to make the catch. So one out. And here's Hernandez. Holland got to be enjoying this year after Tommy John surgery. And he was one of the elite closers prior to getting injured. And yeah, he, remember he had a bunch of tryouts. Before spring training, and the Rockies are the ones that took a gamble on him. Boy, has that paid off? It really has because it just lengthened out the whole bullpen. There's a strike to Hernandez trying to get on for Slater. Hit into right center field. Blackman is chasing. Blackman is going to have to play this one off the wall. And Hernandez is going to race to third, and he'll have a triple. So a pinch hit triple. And a nice opposite field approach for Gorkis Hernandez. Fastball really right out there in the middle of the plate at the belt. So a good pitch to do something with and you take on the hot part of this yard. Not even Blackman can go run that one down. And you never know. So here's Slater. Slater is 0 for 2 with a walk. And he takes a strike. L.B. Tomlinson is on deck. Pence talking to Dyson. 0 and 1. Well, I thought that pitch was better than the first pitch was called a strike. Me too. I thought for sure this was going to be a called strike. But Cedarson obtruded the scout report. More of a low ball guy than a high ball guy. I think which proves your point that that box does not mean that it's the strike zone with that umpire. No, yeah, you're right. That's why if you ever get one electronic strike zone where it would change and it was the same every night. It would absolutely change the game. I mean, learning an umpire strike zone is all part of it. What he'll call, what he won't call. And a base hit for Slater. It's 10 8. And that's his fifth hit in the series. Well, and think about the last two times he's faced Holland, a guy he's never faced before. Some of the elite stuff on a very confident closing arm, and he's had two base hits. Last night, a two strike count here. Gets a high fastball and just launches it right back up the middle, right side of second base. Well, with the tying run coming to the plate, it's going to be Buster Posey. Buster hit a home run last night, and that's when he. Hurt his ankle. 
but good enough to take an at bat here in the ninth. And it's 10 to 8. And he takes high, one ball and no strikes. Span is on deck. Slater with the base hit to get the tie and run to the plate. Down low, 2 and 0. Oh. This was the home run, and he tweaked his ankle. His his ankle that he had surgery on in 2011. Uh, they theorized after the game that perhaps he may have loosened up a piece of scar tissue in his ankle. But when he walked from the dugout up to the clubhouse, we thought we, he was going to DL. Yeah, I know. See what he gets 2 and 0. Oh. Whatever it is, he's going to try to hit it out if it's a good pitch. It's inside 3 and 0. Oh. It's my experience, and maybe yours too, that when you do go through what possibly Buster Posey went through with scar tissue, eventually you're going to feel a lot better. I mean, better than it was before you tweaked it. But the tweak is scary. Very scary. And Posey will take the walk. I don't know if Holland was any too keen on throwing Buster Posey a strike. Block is going to run. Well, here's Span. Now you got the tie and run at first base. And the secret weapon, tie block, coming out to run. Span is two for four, a triple and a home run. One ball and no strikes. And this crowd of over 46,000 getting a little antsy. Slater block. They're your base runners. And a strike. One ball and one strike. Not the speed, not the location he was looking. Denard span. I mean, he will lengthen out. He will go for the long ball. But if he's looking for it, he's not going to look middle way. He's going to look for a mistake down and in. Panic on deck. Two and one. Oh, and pounding that outside corner. 15 or make it 14 pitches now for Holland. He threw 21 in the game last night. Cedarstraw the plate up by and asked if that was a strike. That was late moving. Downward snap. And now you make the two strike adjustment. However, we have seen Span already homer tonight in a two strike count. It's foul in front of the Rockies dugout. So a good matchup. 
Spin, Holland. Ninth inning. Giants fans with their rally caps on. Sliders. A downward bite. You can see the movement. It's a straight downer. Well, here's a guy that may be the hottest hitter on the team right now, at least in this game. And it's Joe Panic who's got three extra base hits in this game, a home run, and two doubles. So here's Joe Panic ready to get after it. No balls in one strike. Right, right that hard slider. The high three quarter release gives him the straight down movement. You really get a chance to see not a lot of tilt to it. It's just straight down. The same thing with his curveball, but at a lesser speed. And then the splits not that far off either. Everything he has is it's got downward bite. Slater and Block are your base runners. Block is the tying run. Panic at the plate is the lead run. Way outside, it's a ball and a strike. It's Morris in Melanson. If the score gets tied, you'll see Morris. If the Giants go ahead, you'll see Melanson. Foul back, one and two. This is what Panic did. He was the second hitter of the game. And now he's in a fight because he's behind in the count one and two. And he knows eventually that, that slider in the dirt is coming. One and two. This will be pitch number 21. Up the middle. And that's the ball game. So, Giants give him a finish. Not good enough. And in another ball game where they came up with 11 hits and eight runs, it wasn't enough because this is a very powerful Rockies offense. And if you give them a couple of breaks, they're going to take advantage of it. Well, and that's just kind of the nature of the beast. It's the nature of the environment. It's Coors Field. And we've seen two Coors Field specials here in the first two games of this four game set. And a very frustrating night for the big man, Jeff Samarja. The Jets will try and regroup tomorrow. All right, final score here in Denver. It's the Rockies 10 and the Giants 8. Stay tuned. Insurance Giants postgame live starts right after these messages.